Hello and welcome to this short clinical case discussion with me, Rachid Shah. The case that I have here today, the 28-year-old previously healthy male who comes to the office due to episodic fevers, night sweats and weight loss for several months. He does not use tobacco, alcohol or illicit drugs. The patient works as a driving instructor and volunteers at a homeless shelter. His temperature is 37.2 degrees Celsius. Physical examination is normal with the exception of cervical lymphadenopathy. A lymphoid biopsy is performed and the histopathology slide is shown in the image below. What is the most likely diagnosis? Pause the video here. You can rewind the video if you want. Take a look at the image, the symptoms and come to a final diagnosis and then we'll move forward. All right. I hope you have reached a diagnosis and let's move forward and see what the correct answer is. The correct answer is C, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, how did I reach this conclusion? Let's take a look at the symptoms that the patient presents to us with. Episodic fevers, night sweats, and weight loss. These three symptoms are the constitutional symptoms or the B symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma. These are present in about 40% of the patients. On examination, we find that our patient has cervical lymphadenopathy. Cervical lymphadenopathy is the most common type of lymphadenopathy seen in patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And here we are told that the patient does not consume alcohol. What would happen if the patient consumed alcohol? In a case of Hodgkin's lymphoma, if a patient consumes alcohol, the lymphadenopathy, which usually is non-tender, becomes tender. So in alcoholics, we have a tender lymphadenopathy in Hodgkin's lymphoma. Ahead, we have the histopathological slide. This, in this slide, we see a large cell. It is bilobed and it is eosinophilic with a characteristic owl-eye appearance. This cell is the reach turnberg cell. A reach turnberg cell in presence of an inflammatory background is diagnostic of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now let's take a look at the different histological subtypes of Hodgkin's lymphoma. The histological subtypes are of two major types, classical and non-classical. The classical are further, the classical further has other types that are the lymphocyte rich type, nodular sclerosis type, mixed cellularity type, lymphocyte depleted type. And in the non-classical, we have a nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Moving ahead to the Ann Arbor staging. The Ann Arbor staging constitutes of four major stages. Stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Stage one has single lymph node region involvement. Stage two, two or more lymph node region are, regions are involved on the same side of the diaphragm. On stage three, lymph node regions are involved on both the sides of the diaphragm. This is the difference between stage two and three. Stage four, we have multiple lymph node regions involvement or a disseminated lymph node region involvement. With, so this can also have extra lymphatic organ involvement with or without lymphatic involvement. This is stage four. Now, these stages are again classified into A or B. A stands for asymptomatic and B stands for the B's presence of B symptoms. What were the B symptoms? Weight loss, fever, and night sweats. These three were the B symptoms. If the patient has these three B symptoms, the patient is staged as B. And if these symptoms are absent, he's asymptomatic, this patient is staged A. Now, we can again classify these stages in another manner. This another manner is the involvement of extra lymphatic organ. If extra lymphatic organs are involved, they are given a subscript of E. If spleen is involved, a subscript of S is given. So this is Ann Arbor staging. Now, why is this important? Ann Arbor staging in association with the histological subtypes helps determine the prognosis and the treatment of the patient. So now let's take a look at the treatment. The treatment depends whether it's a classical type or non-classical type. A classical Hodgkin's lymphoma, we follow the ABVD regimen. What is ABVD regimen? A stands for adriamycin, B stands for bleomycin, V for vincristine, and D for decarbazine. These are the four drugs that are used for the treatment of classical Hodgkin's lymphoma. And if it's a limited disease, we give two to four cycles of ABVD with involved field radiotherapy. In an advanced disease, we give six cycles of ABVD, and this is monitored with PET-CT scan. In a non-classical type of Hodgkin's, 
we give radiotherapy as the treatment so that is all for this short clinical case discussion thank you so much for watching this till the end and i'll see you in the next one thank you